Good morning, and welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. My name is Gordon Ritchie, and with Karen Mills, we have the great pleasure of being the co-conductors of our church choir, and we're also your service leaders this morning. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, multi-generational religious community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free-thinking, spiritual-questing individuals joined in common support and action. We believe in diversity, including diversity of beliefs from divine believers to humanists, from pagans to atheists and agnostics. We believe in the compassion of the human heart, the warmth of community, the pursuit of justice, and the search for meaning in our lives. We gather with gratitude this morning on traditional Cree lands that are now part of Treaty 6 and shared by many nations. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all our children. Our opening words this morning are by Gwen Matthews. As December opens up before us, we welcome in the gift of reflection. We turn toward our holiday celebrations and search for common threads and meanings. We begin with Yule, the winter solstice. And we are invited to explore the duality, cycles, and seasons, and to witness the Holly King being overcome by the Oak King. Yule reminds us that we all partake in the miracle of renewal. Hanukkah, the festival of lights, commemorates a time of miracles when the faith of the Jewish people sustained them to reclaim their holy temple and keep the light of the menorah burning for eight days. Christmas, the celebration of Jesus' humble birth in a manger, offers us to revisit the miracle of birth and the desire to find saviors to heal the scars of humanity. Here, in our church, you are just as much a holiday miracle as the turning of the earth, the persistence and dedication to a faith as the creation of each new life. We see the love you give to others, the space you create to hold one another's joys and sorrows, and the generosity and spirit you entrust to this community. You are a holiday miracle. This community is one of miracle making. So this morning, we're acknowledging four different celebrations. This is the first Sunday of Advent. We also have this evening the beginning of Hanukkah. Tomorrow is the beginning of Chalika, which you'll learn a little bit more later. And, of course, uh, the winter solstice. So to acknowledge those four celebrations, I've invited four individuals who re represent those four faith groups to come forth and let our chalice. So I'd like to ask forward Robert and Audrey and Ali and Lyndon to light our chalice. Thank you all. Next reading is from Megan Rule. And for any of you who know me, um, the title may make you smile, thinking that joy would ever bring me winter, or winter would ever bring me joy, either one. Um, but I think as, as I read it, you'll see why Gordon thought I should be the one to read it. Though the thought of snow may excite some, maybe most people, I am proud to say that it does not excite me. When I wake up and see a blanket of white, wet fluff covering my car, I do not become overjoyed. I groan because it feels with every snowstorm that the summer season seems to slip farther and farther away as it's just more snow that needs to melt. It gets in the way of my day-to-day -day life and completely throws me off my game. Challenge not accepted, Mr. Blizzard. However, with the cold winter season come some of my favorite memories as well. Christmas, my birthday, family, home-cooked meals. There is a light at the end of the snowy tunnel. With my birthday being four days before Christmas, this time of year has always been a favorite of mine. And that's pretty close. My birthday's in January, not four days before Christmas. Christmas, home-cooked meals, family, 
Although my family did not roast chestnuts on an open fire, we did roast hams and turkeys, and the smell of that reaffirms my love for the holidays. Still today, coming down the stairs with the smell of holiday dinner wafting towards me makes my stomach growl in a way that it usually doesn't. My mother's cooking with the Christmas music playing is a wonderful scene to be part of. The smell of coffee in the morning with pancakes on the griddle or eggs benedict in the making mixed with some fresh pine scent of the Christmas tree in the next room is a smell that will elicit the happiest of memories. Waking up to the smell of the heat from the radiator is how most winter mornings start. Like any other morning, I'll go to the bathroom, brush my hair, then come downstairs. But the difference is now that the house smells like a Christmas tree because the pine needles follow us everywhere. The kitchen smells like a bakery in all its sugary glory and brunch and coffee for days. Talk about living the dream. Enjoying fellowship with my family as the sun beams in through the front window while my stomach is full of fruit and morning pastries is a sure sign of the Christmas season. Then running outside and smelling the snow mixed with the wreaths on my neighbor's door and the fireplaces that are already lit brings warmth to my body as my lungs continually fill with cold morning air. Scents like these and memories like these are what make the snowflakes bearable. Although winter may not be my favorite season, it does bring me a sense of relaxation and pure ecstasy that no other season brings. A time for love and joy and thankfulness that is topped off with homemade food and comfortable sleep. Even the darkest winter days can still have light in them, light that shines from the center of my home, a light that will always be there to guide me back home. Without the cold, the darkness of winter, the warmth from my favorite season wouldn't be able to glow as strongly. So the blizzard challenge may not be accepted, but if it comes, I guess I'll have to sit back with a mug of hot chocolate and let it happen and enjoy the love of my family and the smell of the holidays for an extra day. The Craft of Winter Solstice by Daniel Gregoire. Here we are, near the cusp of the winter solstice, when the light comes back. To celebrate, I went to the discount store in search of inexpensive picture frames. I felt the urge to use what I have in the way of old photographs and glitter glue for some higher and greater purpose. So off I went to buy the most perfect plastic frames for $2.99. As I made my way to pay the cashier, an older man, he looked at me and my frames and knowingly exhaled, Ah, this is the time for reflection. Apparently, I was not the first person to feel nostalgic and buy many picture frames near the end of the year. We then engaged in small talk about Christmas and the state of the world. He lamented, and I tried to cheer him up. But both our flames seemed to be flickering in the cold winds of coming winter. It doesn't help that on the eve of winter, the days are so painfully short. The nights are relentless, and they keep coming earlier. But then the winter solstice arrives, and although it's the official start of winter, it comes as a brief reprieve from the growing night and a hopeful signpost. I need the solstice and all it represents, a threshold the closing of a chapter, the start to sunlight timidly warming our cold and frost-bitten souls. Winter solstice neatly coincides with our collective desire for a break in time to unlock and review the past and as we look to the light of the future. This time round, I am greeting the solstice with craft, using my old photographs and reframing the past with some bright artistic flourishes courtesy of glitter glue. I'm making the most of this unique astronomical time, perhaps not unlike the ancient peoples of Europe who gathered breathlessly around bonfires and hearths for warmth to celebrate the new thing that is just on the horizon, growing light and the end of night's domain, even in the midst of cold. The end can be a beginning too, as someone said, 
and the solstice is where we start from. A prayer. Spirit of the empty spaces, spirit of new beginnings, here we are. In this often difficult season of cold and night, it seems the light we need might go away forever. Help us to catch our breath so we might not stumble into despair. Let the past be our guide, helping us to the future we need, just on the horizon, unlocking, opening, growing. And now I invite Audrey Brooks to come forward and read, "'Twas the night before Hanukkah." It was the night before Hanukkah, my boy chicks and maidles. Not a, not a sound could be heard, not even from the dreidels. Menorah was set on the chimney alight. In the kitchen, our buba would gehabt a bite of pastrami, chopped liver, and a glass of tea, and Zara pickles with bagels. Oy vey. <laughs> the clock on the mantelpiece, there was a ticking, and Bubba was tackling a shiktala chicken. A tumult arose like a thousand braukas. Santa had fallen and broken his tukas. <laughs> I put on my slippers, eins zwei dry, while Bubi was busy devouring the latkes. To the window I ran, and to my surprise, a little red yarmulke was on top of his head. He got to the door and saw the menorah. Yiddish kinder, he said. Mazel tov. I thought I was in a goyish hoise, but as long as I'm here, I'll leave you a few toys. <laughs> Which much gash re, re, I said, do best a yid. He asked for some knishes with pepper and salt, but they were too hot. He said, Oi, gewalt. And buttoning his heisen, he rose from the tish and said, Your kosher essen is simply delish. As he went to the door, he said, I'll see you later. I'll be back next Pesach in time for the Seder. More rapid than eagles, his prancers they came, as he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Izzy, now Ira, now Yitzhak, now Sammy, now Irving and Maxie and Moisha and Mommy. He gave a gashray as he rode out of sight. Guten Yom Tov to all and to all a good night. <laughs> Since our overtly materialistic culture not only emphasizes consumerism, but also offers unrealistic expectations of ourselves and our families during the winter holidays through commercials, TV specials, and movies, many families can feel acute disappointment and anxiety. The holidays often intensify family pressures, and they can be even more difficult for Unitarian Universalist families if theological issues conflict with family traditions or needs. If you are one of those facing some of these issues, it may help to take a step back and focus on positive aspects of the winter holidays for yourself and your family. This may mean recreating events from your childhood or inventing new traditions that are more meaningful or a combination of both. Many Unitarian Universalists have begun to rethink the ideas behind the winter holidays to make them particularly meaningful for their families. Unitarian Universalist Christian families can enjoy singing Christmas carols, decorating the Christmas tree, and baking cookies, but may also have made a conscious choice to simplify gift-giving by deliberately shifting the emphasis of the holidays away from consumerism. Unitarian Universalist families that don't consider themselves theologically Christian or Jewish may still celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah and even tell the stories as the celebration of rebirth and renewal or to reinforce the value of giving to others. Other Unitarian Universalist families have made the conscious decision to embrace the winter solstice as their primary winter tradition, whether or not they are pagan, by focusing upon 
how the darkness of the winter months is a natural progression of the year. This celebration is particularly meaningful to my family. On the solstice, we forego all electricity, except for heating, which we turn down. A powerful reminder of how our northern European ancestors experienced the dark winter months and how the earth still provides so many of our resources. We do share gifts as part of this tradition, but even more importantly, we share wishes for one another in a powerful candlelighting ceremony that grows more meaningful every year. In recent years, a celebration of Chalika, a uniquely Unitarian Universalist winter holiday, has been gaining in popularity with families all over the country. Chalika runs for seven days, usually from the first Monday in December through the following Sunday. Each Sunday represents a different Unitarian Universalist principle. Each evening, a chalice is lit by families in their homes to celebrate their UU identity and heritage. Gifts may be exchanged as part of the celebration of Chalika, but they are usually homemade and could even be a verbal offering, a written promise, or an act of service tied to the theme of the seven principles. I would like to invite Karen down to remind us of the UU principles and how they can be put into place this time of year. On the first night, we can think about how each person is important. Honor those you do not understand or those whom you do not agree with. Write a letter, send a card, offer an apology or forgiveness. On the second night, be kind in all that you do. Honor those in your community that are less fortunate. Volunteer at the food bank, donate to a shelter, and smile to everyone that you know. On the third night, we're free to learn together. Honor other Unitarian Universalists and their spiritual journeys. Give a UU a chalice or a favorite hymn. Host a UU gathering. Extend words of peace to a UU you've hurt in the past. The fourth night, we search for what is true. Honor education or another tradition. Learn something new about another tradition. Share what you know with someone who would like to learn. On the fifth night, all people need a voice. Honor democracy. Help a political party. Write a letter. Help a committee at church. The sixth night, build a fair and peaceful world. Honor our global community, write a letter for our global cause, donate to an organization like Amnesty International, and don't forget to bring your letters next Sunday for the Social Justice Right for Rights. On the last night, we care for Earth's lifeboat. Honor our natural world, start a compost pile, walk outdoors in the river valley to enjoy the beauty we have right here in the city. Help out at a shelter, at an animal rescue, or wake up early just to enjoy the sunrise. I'll leave you with these words by Elizabeth M. Strong. We are in the midst of the season of celebration. Celebrations of the birth of new hope, of the festival of lights, of the triumph of freedom. The darkness of the year is lifting and the time of light grows longer. We have gathered with an anticipation of hope for peace on earth and in our homes. We have gathered in this season of celebrations, seeking comfort to soften the pain and the losses our lives have suffered in the fast retreating year. We have gathered to worship joyfully, within this season of celebrations, with the tenderness and love of family and friends among us. Let us be embraced by the strength and power of this sacred space that we each bring as we create this beloved community. Let joy and sorrow join in the fullness of our being. Let the power and strength we embody join us together as we move through the seasons of celebration into a new year with a new vision of hope for peace on earth. May this season be for you the most wonderful time of the year. May it be so. Blessed be. The Moment of Magic 
by Victoria E. Safford. Now is the moment of magic when the whole round earth turns again toward the sun. And here's a blessing. The days will be longer and brighter now, even before the winter settles in to chill us. Now is the moment of magic when people beaten down and broken with nothing left but misery and candles and their own clear voices kindle tiny lights and whisper secret music. And here's a blessing. The dark universe is suddenly illuminated by the lights of the menorah, suddenly ablaze with the lights of Kinera, and the whole world is glad and loud with winter singing. Now is the moment of magic, when an eastern star beckons the ignorant toward an unknown goal. And here's a blessing. They find nothing in the end but an ordinary baby born at midnight, born in poverty, and the baby's cry like the bells ringing makes people wonder as they wander through their lives what human love might really look like, sound like, feel like. Now is the moment of magic, and here's a blessing. We already possess all the gifts we need. We've already received our presence. Ears to hear music, eyes to behold lights, hands to build true peace on earth, and to hold each other tight in love.